that's a nifty already are and uh, the nifty bank is reaching out to two percent higher let's invite our market master krishna kumar karva managing director at mk global uh, good morning uh, mr karva thank you very much uh, uh, are you also in with the market on this it seems to be looking past the uh, covid pessimism and is looking at life beyond are you also advising your clients to use the dips to buy good morning lata i think after the experience of last time around investors know that uh, uh, things will improve and now we have the benefit of experience and expectations of uh, vaccination accelerated vaccination also also so my sense is that uh, investors are today are willing to look beyond the immediate pressure for the quarter 1 and look at the uh, valuation etc from a longer term perspective and invest accordingly so as you asked about advising yes uh, what we are telling our clients is the same thing is that uh, don't get taken in by the temporary headwind for the temporary macro which looks uh, uh, negative but look at the longer term picture and if any investor is giving us money we have straight investing 70 to 80% of that uh, money to the market currently and just keeping 15 25 50 to 20% uh, balance to be invested okay uh mr garva good morning and thanks for joining us and hope you are safe and healthy wherever you are um you know the one thing that icici bank's numbers has taught us that in a very challenging environment it is companies with a strong pedigree and a good brand that managed to stay afloat do you think stocks like icici bank deserve to trade deserve a higher premium purely because of this reason and what would your advice be to investors See, if you look at in the last two three months, we have seen that the banking and the financial services space has underperformed, and it was very surprising to see that underperformance despite the very good quarterly by the, most of the banks, even in quarter three. So my sense is that uh, as the economy picks up and the expectations of that the GDP growth of India should be at least twelve percent plus, many of these uh, top quality banks with uh, adequate uh, capital etc. should be able to grow at least at eighteen to twenty percent. so what we are seeing today is possibly a correction i mean the stocks had corrected from 15 17% from their highs and what we are seeing is a catch up and as you rightly said yes the stronger brands uh, and the banks with good capability in terms of their business profile capital adequacy etc they should be the one which will be able to gain as uh, going forward so yes we are bullish on the whole uh, banking and financial space possibly that's the place to be investing in aggressively in the current environment okay okay uh, but uh, uh, Krish, uh, mr karwa if i can just expand that i mean uh, what would be your uh, choice sectors now would uh, with okay let's begin with only finance because uh, uh, it, that would be itself quite a large sector what's the pecking order would you go up to the mid cap banks uh, uh, would you look at non bank uh, entities also as some candidates you know the bajaj twins uh, the cholas etc see so in our portfolio yes i think uh, obviously we invest in the leaders uh, which is the top notch banks which are which themselves are so undervalued the versus the potential but earlier obviously we were only focused on investing in the large uh, private corporate banks but i think the top two public sector banks also uh, afford good investment opportunity so that could also be invested in as far as nbfcs are concerned yes uh, uh, the uh, good nbfc in defined spaces uh, whether it's in housing finance or whether it's in consumer finance they do offer an opportunity but my judgment is that some of the valuations in the top notch nbfcs is possibly they are richly valued and maybe they may not offer uh, sufficient returns for investors to invest in at current prices okay how about uh, companies like hcl tech because you know i mean of course there's a bit of a disappointment in the numbers but the deal wins have gone up by 49% in a challenging environment like this the dividend payout ratio has increased um, are these reasons enough to be putting more money to work in names like hcl tech i think in it what i have been consistently saying is that uh, now it looks like that the analyst community is up the curve in terms of the expectations versus the delivery so there is no doubt about the it companies in terms of the tailwinds that they enjoy and the numbers that they will deliver in the coming few years but looks like that the market has discounted the next two years growth so going forward my judgment is that uh, the pe expansion 
which happened in most of the large and mid market mid mid IT companies is possibly done with. Now, possibly, what you will see is that the IT company will capture the earning growth, which itself is decent, anywhere between 13 to 17 percent for different companies. So, if there is no significant positive surprise, then we will see these kind of small corrections. But it's important to have uh, some of these IT companies as part of a balanced portfolio. Uh, you know, Mr. Karwa, uh, up until February when our numbers were coming down to 10,000 and we thought uh, that we can blow the all clear on COVID, we saw mid caps outperforming. I mean, the first three months were extraordinary mid cap outperformance uh, over Nifty. Uh, is that phase over now? No, I don't think so. I think uh, what we are going through in mid cap currently is maybe a kind of consolidation. And uh, investors are waiting to see how many of the mid-cap companies perform in light of increasing raw material prices and are they able to maintain their margins, etc. But my sense is that in an economy which is expected to grow by 12% next year and maybe 7-8% the year after, and uh, these mid-caps have come out of a lot of consolidation. So all the sectoral leaders in the minor sectors that these mid-caps operate in, they still have a lot of team uh, to grow and to reward the investors. I think what investors need to be cognizant of is the valuations at which they are entering these companies and that will determine the returns that uh, they will make. So my sense is that this kind of a consolidation that we are seeing is a function of bottoms up uh, thought process of most investors rather than any challenges in the mid-cap segment. And in, I, as you asked, yeah, as far as mid-cap outperformance versus Nifty is concerned, Overall, I would think so that the return expectations and the return delivered for Metcalf will be far, far superior than the Nifty returns. Okay, by the way, the market is on fire right now. The bank Nifty is up 700 points and the market breadth is just getting better as we speak. The other space I wanted to discuss with you, Mr. Karwa, is the NBFCs. We have the Bajaj Twins, Bajaj Finance, FinServe reporting their numbers uh, you know, later this week. And you also had the likes of m and Finance reporting as well. How are you positioned here? And uh, do you think that similar to the good quality banks, the good quality NBFCs will also see more money come through? As I alluded earlier also in the interview that I think the, in the NBFC space we will have to look at every individual NBFC because I think they have their sectoral focus. So I think there are some challenges which are expected as far as the rural India facing NBFCs are concerned because this time around it looks like that the COVID spread is even equally strong in the tier 2, tier 3 towns uh, unlike earlier last time when it was more in the cities. So that could be some challenges in the rural India facing NBFCs in terms of their recoveries, uh, etc. But at the same time, NBFCs which are focused on commercial vehicle finance or affordable home finance, uh, they should do uh, well. As far as uh, NBFCs which are consumer facing or uh, consumer durables and that kind of NBFCs, I think they should have some challenges if this COVID uh, spread, uh, the second wave of COVID continues to spread the way it is, then there could be some temporary challenges. But in that space, I think the valuation is what is constraining. Okay. Okay, uh, Krishna, let me put it this way. You know, we are at 14,500. Uh, would you be confident buying even as we go towards 15,000 or do you think at higher levels you will wait? And secondly, uh, if I were to give you, uh, you know, uh, 100 rupees, what will be your split, incremental split in terms of sectors? So, I would be very clear that uh, at what level is Nifty at any point of time doesn't constrain us from investing. So, whether it is 14,500 or 15,000, that's just a number. Because at the end of the day, uh, you are investing in stocks, which is a function of bottom of bottoms up opportunities in terms of investing. So yes, at 14,500 we were investors, at 8,000 we were investors and maybe at 15,000 and 16,000 also we would be investors. The question is in which sector which you asked for. So currently, I think the best place to put incremental money, as I said in the beginning itself, should be into the banking and financial space because there the valuation versus the opportunity uh, seems to be very, very aggressively in favor of the investors. So that's the space where you put your maximum money uh, in. For investors who are slightly more defensive oriented, I think it makes sense to stay invested in IT companies or rather put some money because there is certainty of earnings 
uh, growth at least, which could be anywhere between 12 to 18 percent, depending on the companies that you invest in. Thirdly, I have been alluding to every uh, in the earlier interview also that we believe that the real estate sector that should uh, be a sector which can deliver very good returns. We have seen some of the real estate companies have corrected by say 25, 30 percent uh, in the last uh, 15, 20 days, one month. So again, from a medium-term perspective, that should be a sector to be invested in. And my sense is that the capex cycle is picking up. So investing in and slightly maybe we will we may be ahead of the curve. But investing in industrial at this point of time should augur well for investors' portfolio. So in the, these are the, some of the sectors where you would put more money aggressively. That's the way I would put it. Very useful advice, uh, Krishna, at a time like this. Uh, when you know we are teetering between uh, pessimistic news which comes on, uh, a, on the health front and uh, financial markets which are just uh, running up, up and away. So helpful advice that. Thank you very much indeed Thank for joining much. us and stay safe, of course, you and all your near and dear ones. Thank you very much. Okay, but you know what is...